Uh, thank you, Tom. The, uh, so like Tom said, my name is Rich De Palma, and I'm senior architect at Arcadia Architects. And I also do a bit of lecturing, and one of the aspects of that that's most relevant to, to this is the tech, BIM technology and collaboration that I do along with DIT. Uh, but now I'm going to be speaking to you today uh, primarily from the RKD perspective. The, and where I'm coming from is kind of a summary of what uh, Laura talked about uh, quite well. So following that up is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, but our, our strategy starts off with our leadership. Uh, and I think this is a very key point for any organization that's really going to start to go down or even continue with the BIM road. Bringing BIM into our, our business processes comes from the top. It's, it's a mandate from our senior management to do that. The, uh, now, granted, they can't do that alone, so work groups have been set up within the organization uh, to manage this process. And we have four primary uh, factors that we look at. The first one being BIM education. Uh, second one being a BIM protocol review. So when I say BIM protocol review, think of that more as kind of the high level, the overriding uh, theme for which we practice BIM in the organization. Uh, the third one is the RKD BIM playbook. Uh, and this one we'll spend just a little bit more time on. Uh, and the reason being, this it relates back to the BIM protocol, but this is the, really the day-to-day -day activities that we do in BIM. So this is really where we mapped out our business processes and saying, in this situation, this is how we at least start off trying to, uh, what we want to achieve. What this has allowed us to do is seek out other opportunities. Uh, and if anyone had a chance to catch uh, John Hunt's presentation, you know, this is possibly an area for us where we can move forward. Uh, and where that is, is that we've developed the experience and the expertise to help clients along this process themselves. So we can do that on not only a project level, but even from a company stra a strategic level uh, as well. And this is kind of one avenue of opportunity that we want to explore with our future clients. And the third one is an impact on our overall IT systems. The, we realize that you know just because it's BIM, it's technolo technologically uh, intensive, but it also relates to the other business processes that we relate on technology as well. Uh, so with that said, you know we're modeling in one case, but we're also delivering a whole other suite of information in other ways, and how we can link those two together. So our leadership is providing us the direction, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have a lot of people that are behind the scenes that are steering the boat, you know, and, and we need to row the boat together in order to make sure we're going straight and going fast and going for that winning line. Now, uh, here's an example where leadership uh, has certainly played a very important part in the success of a project. This data center uh, in with our design team is actually an opportunity for us to co-locate. So it came down from our senior management that in order to make sure that this project is a success, we're going to facilitate that by taking out space with our engineering partners. And without that, uh, we wouldn't be able to deliver the project in the effective manner that we have. Uh, Kind of the softer side of BIM has been discussed a lot uh, in these sessions today, and it's kind of it's good to hear because you know the technology is important, but the people are more important, as has already been discussed. The, so we see BIM as a way to leverage our expertise, the uh, rather than replacing it. So in a lot of ways, our values that uh, make our company they still hold true, and you know, we still continue those on. Now, how we deliver those values and let that shown through our projects, that's where we see them really uh, helping us along the way. So we recognize that we're looking at this BIM world through a frame, uh, and rather than change that frame, what we want to do is expand that out so we can see what exactly, where we're coming from uh, and where we're going uh, from this perspective. Here's an example of where our expertise in laboratory projects uh, was really enhanced by the, the BIM process. It's a, a project that we're working with BAM as partners in, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, and we can see here that you know, rather than just have a mandate or a pro project program come down and say, OK, Revit guys do this, the, uh, our designers and our Revit technicians, they're the same people. The, so we're, we're, not, we're not separating out the expertise from that technology. And that's one of the ways we can continue our culture while introducing BIM into our processes. Uh, you know, we're all not experts. You know, we have our BIM black belts. You know, they don't don't get me wrong. But at the same time, there's other BIM users that don't need to be at that level. So, in our education uh, programs that we have in house, uh, as well as how we deploy deploy our project team, uh, we recognize you know the various levels of BIM expertise uh, as well as design expertise. So it's getting that level right. 
uh, is very important to us moving forward with our projects. Uh, and here's a, a very good example of that, where the, uh, the project team that delivered the Bernal project design uh, was a very big combination of people that could barely open a Revit model, uh, and with the, the expertise, experts, they really delivered this and brought it all together to the success that it is. BIM Learning at RKD, one of the things I said in the beginning of the presentation was that uh, we do participate in the education, their level education system. Uh, we have two members of staff, not ju just myself, that uh, teach uh, assistant lectures in DIT in the BIM programs. So we have the capabilities to teach like this. Uh, we have the abilities to come in, sit down with the rest of our staff and say, you know, technically this is how we do this. But more importantly, we have the opportunity to do this. Uh, on a fortnightly basis, we meet all of our BIM teams uh, and when we get together and discuss, okay, what's going on with you guys this week? What's going on with us this week? Uh, and we have cross-pollination between our teams, which is, uh, most of the time it's fun. You know, sometimes uh, there's disagreements uh, that get slightly less fun, but that kind of goes back to that, that storming phase that we, uh, that we talked about. Uh, so we're, we're finding out kind of the different ways of approaching different projects. Uh, this is an example of that, where uh, it was a design-build project for the Kerry Group, uh, that's recently uh, gone out. Uh, the, the construction information has just been just been issued. The, uh, where a lot of the processes that we were taking from a traditional design bid build uh, didn't really translate into the design build section. So we had a lot of uh, learning that came through uh, this particular project. So is there a big picture from us that it is? The, we have a way of doing things. We have our core values, and we do not want to lose that. Uh, I think if we lose that just because we bring BIM into the equation, we're doing a disservice to ourselves and doing a disservice to our clients. So that's very important to us that we, we use BIM. Okay, we'll transform our business processes in ways, but we don't transform who we are. The, uh, like I was saying about the, our BIM strategy, you know, we're always looking for that opportunity that can develop. You know, we're keeping an open mind to saying, yes, we're using this to develop uh, architectural projects, but also what else does this enable us to do? One of the examples is how we can uh, aid in client decision making at the early stages of the project to ensure that the BIM processes and the BIM results that they want are delivered uh, through the design team. And there's, uh, you know, uh, there's opportunities that are out there for us to learn, you know, we're good, you know, and we, we do know that. We, we have seven projects that have gone out past the construction phase process uh, in BIM. We have a couple more on the pipeline uh, that will be coming through. Uh, but we know we can get better. You know, there's continuous improvement was mentioned in the, uh, the first two presentations of this session. That's key for us is to, to come to events like this and learn from other people, uh, learn from internal research ourselves so we can deliver better products and look at it from a holistic point of view. So rather than just seeing BIM as the technology, we're taking a look and making sure we don't put ourselves into a corner where we're just looking at very specific aspects of BIM. Uh, and this is what we ultimately want to be. You know, we want to, in order to win, you know, our F1 team needs to get together and perform at a very high standard. It's not good enough just to put the tires uh, on the car. You need to put the tires on the car as best possible, using best practices with them, and move forward as a high-performing team. So just thanks for listening. This is just a, a project that we have going on uh, in Grange Gorman uh, at the moment that's being put out to tender. Uh, and that's actually it. So thanks for listening. Thanks.